Hello everyone, welcome to another video. I am Rider of Dinosaurs. Today's video is a special one. It's my birthday and what better way to celebrate it than to make a video about this channel's biggest name. This will probably be the last video I'll release about him as he's now out of the picture and it's not fun making fun of him anymore. Unless, of course, new releases come to light. I'd also like to take the opportunity to thank FTFE for my new subscribers and to thank them for subscribing. And now, without any further ado, let's get started. If you don't understand science, the first thing about science, most, any basic scientist will tell you, scientific laws can't be broken. In fact, we learned that in junior high. So, that's not basic. sure why your belief... That's basic yeah, stuff, that's basic Ryan. science. Dude. Sorry. Super basic, bro. You can't break a law. And if well, Nathan, clearly you shouldn't be talking about not breaking the law. <laughs> what? That's not what we're talking about. That's not what we're talking about? No, we're talking about the scientific law. It's the scientific law. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Continuing. If you think you can, please present the scientific law you can break so I can give you a Nobel Prize. As you might have noticed, JM and Nathan put together can't make a brain. In how many ways were they wrong? Let me count the ways. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand. First, as indicated by this text from Berkeley University, a scientific law is not immutable. No, it clearly states that a scientific law may be modified or rejected based on new evidence and perspectives. So that's that out of the window. Second, and arguably third, people don't receive Nobel Prizes for pointing out laws that can't be broken. They are given Nobel Prizes for new scientific discoveries. And, and I'm 100% sure on this, it's not Nathan Thompson who awards them. No, it's not even a theory. Magnetism. It doesn't pass the scientific method to meet the qualifications of a theory. It's yeah. a assumption at best. But but Nathan, didn't your pal Jam Truth, you know, the actor, biochemist, chef, choreographer, cinematographer, combatant, dancer, director, executive producer, gardener, graphic designer, leader of a playgroup, mortal man, philosopher, food forensics expert, choreographer, physicist, producer. Research scientist, singer, sniper, studier of languages, theologian, video editor, video lightning, carpenter, video photographer. And writer. Didn't he say that assumption is... The word assume in science means that it's assumed to be a fact. So, when you say this... It's yeah. a assumption at best. Do you actually mean it's a fact? Oh my god. Let's continue can't have a pressurized system in a non-pressurized system without a container, without a right. seal, it's not in a container, without a sealed container. <laughs> like, yeah. our atmosphere should be sucked into outer space. Now, commence operation vacuum suck. But on to another subject. You all know Nathan Thompson loves to agree with JM. And he even defends him on live streams. I'm sorry, he started talking about your physicist claim again. I muted him. Yeah. JM, okay. could you please explain again, because he didn't understand that weight has nothing to do with gravity. And now, for your viewing pleasure, Nathan Thompson saying JM is wrong. How about we do this? I'm going to give you some simple, some very, very simple examples. At the equator, the curvature of the Earth is 8 inches times miles squared. However, let's say 9 miles. Okay, go ahead. It doesn't Why even do matter. Miles, right. Doesn't even, hold, let me finish my point, please, before you rudely interrupt me. Thank you. But if the more I go towards the North Pole, the curvature increases. Right. So the mathematical equation of 8 inches times miles squared 
is only good at the equator. Um, JM, uh, I'm not following. I gotta following disagree that. with you here too. It's a ball. It curves the same in every direction. Dude. You know you're saying something really, really ridiculous when even Nathan Thompson says he doesn't believe you. Actually, it's a little wider in the equator. If I'm flying over, if I'm flying over the 30th meridian. The curve is is greater than when I'm at the equator. So you've done this. You find through the meridian. I don't need to do it. You oh, can okay. So you're just talking. You just can... rhetoric. Okay. Go. No, 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 no. You can look at a ball and tell the curvature is greater the closer you get to the poles. I disagree with everything JM's saying right now. I've never heard this argument, but go if ahead. If you find, if you. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? Nathan Thompson telling JM he's wrong. Are you ready to see more clips of JM embarrassing himself? Let's go on. Weight is an established phenomenon. It's been established for thousands of years. Okay, gravity's only been around for um, how long do you want to give it, Nate? Because I've got yeah, two different two, numbers. Three hundred years, four hundred years, three hundred, three hundred, four hundred years. How much do you want to give it, Nate? That's the question here. What is GM doing here? Well, GM is showing us how flat earthers come up with their facts. One of them comes up with a number for something that's being discussed, then asks another flurf to choose one of the options, and then... We've got a fact that gravity has only been around for 400 years. I wonder what kept things grounded 401 years ago before gravity existed. Rubber bands? Nails? Maybe glue? Now, a lot of things have been said about GM's master's degree. But I think this one takes the cake. Pun intended. Can you repeat that? What was your master's? Jesse. What's Jesse. the first word, Jesse? Instruction. Instruction. Which means I can walk into any university and teach. Really? And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the level of delusion GM has got himself into. Not only he says his masters entitles him to talk about science, because, you know, it's a masters of science, forget about the instructional bit, because it's not convenient, but it also says that he can walk into any university and teach, because at this point, the instructional bit is advantageous. In the end, his masters is nothing more than a 12 month online course that focuses on new ways of creating teaching material so students don't get bored in class. But let's move on to the next clip. So this idea that, that round earthers have, oh, we've known it for thousands of years, is an absolute lie and completely debunkable. Because well, uh, there are people who, at least in this country, you could not teach around Earth 75 years ago. Ah, uh, yes. I love these claims where he says something like, this didn't happen X time ago, only because it's so easy to prove him wrong. Now this clip of him saying this is probably from last year, so 75 years before 2019 is 1944. Let's see if I can find a photograph of an American classroom with a globe in it. And why an American classroom? Because it does clearly say, at least in this country. Seems I found one from 1930, so 14 years before the date GM claimed. Remember that he said, At least in this country, you could not teach around Earth 75 years ago. I can hear you ask, how do you know when this photo was taken? Well, the link I used had the date. Here. I'm also sure you're going to ask, how do we know these photos are from the US? Well, the negatives were from the Child's Art Gallery, who went out of business. They had photograph studios in Michigan. You can read all about the origins of the photos in the website viewsofthepast.com. And this is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in my next video.